ready to go? Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Sorry about that little delay there. The computer's getting a little tired. I am Dr. Joe Esposito. Glad you could be with us today. A fun show today. This is the one, uh, uh, this is an adult show. So if there's any children uh, in the room, you might want to have them leave. We're going to be talking about a lot of adult topics, the food romance connection. Uh, if you're new to the show, the way it works is we do two 24-minute segments. So I will talk for 24 minutes. You will write down any health questions you might have, uh, whatever platform you're on, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, whatever else. Uh, at the break, my producer, Allison, will read me the healthcare questions that you asked. I'll answer them. We move on to the next phase, and then I'll answer questions again. So this is a great opportunity for you to get healthcare questions answered where you may not go nowhere else to go. That's going to be my job. So I am ready to start whenever you are, Allison. Ready? Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. All right, so today's show, very adult-themed. We're going to be talking about the food romance connection. So this is probably the one show I'll tell you that get the kids out of the room if you don't want the kids to hear it. We're not going to curse. We're not going to use anything bad. We're going to use scientific terms. But it's something that you just might want to consider your call. I want to give you a heads up. Uh, we're talking about very adult themes today. So with that being said, uh, hopefully nobody changed the channel. But if you did, I understand you if you did. All right. So we're going to talk about the food romance connection. And this, this is a topic that comes up not every day in my office, it's probably every half hour. People come to us and they say, well, Dr. Joe, I've got neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, sciatic pain, whatever it is. And then inevitably, they'll come up and say, I also got problems in a romantic department for men and women. And we have to look at several things. Number one is we have to look at the nerve supply to the sex organ. Now, the nerves in the low back might give you back pain, leg pain, hip pain, knee pain, ankle pain if they're being pinched. But those nerves also control the colon, sex organs, and bladder. So if you have a pinched nerve in a low back, you might have gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, urinary issues, sexual issues. The catch to this is that 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. You can have a pinched nerve and not know it. And so you don't feel your ovaries, your testicles, your uh, vas deferens functioning. So many times you don't feel them not functioning because 90% of the nerves in your body don't feel pain. They produce function. And so if you have problems with an organ, I always felt that this is the missing link in healthcare. We should always check the nerve supply to the organ. We always talk about, you know, uh, something's wrong with my prostate. I've got to treat my prostate. Something's wrong with my heart, my liver, my spleen, my kidneys. I've got to treat those organs. But we're a big unit. We all work together. And so treating one area oftentimes doesn't solve the problem. You have to treat the whole body. And so when it comes to romance, it, many times it's a body thing, not just a sex organ thing. So let's make believe that we're going out for a romantic dinner. And we're going to go out to a typical romantic restaurant. So what would that look like? Well, if we thought, if we stereotype this, it would be a steakhouse. We'll have some wine, some steaks, some baked potato, butter, sour cream, cheesecake, bread and butter, coffee, a uh, piece, of, piece of, you know, dessert. Um, and so let's go through... What happens if you go out to a typical fancy schmancy expensive dinner? What does that do to your love life and your love function? So we'll start with the steak. The number one consumer of energy we have as humans is romance. Again, trying to keep it clean in case you got the kid, haven't got the kids out of the room yet. So the number one consumer of energy is romance. The number two consumer of energy is digestion. And the hardest thing for us to digest as humans is animal protein, animal flesh. So if you're eating a steak, it's going to use a lot of energy to try to break this down. Because you, you take the steak, you chew it a few times, and you swallow it. Very few people chew it until it's actually a, a, a slurry or a mush in your mouth. So it goes into your stomach, and your stomach is full of acid. And your stomach's main job is to take proteins, like steak or chicken, or tofu, or carrots, and take those proteins and unravel them. Now, if you look at a protein under a microscope, it looks like a ball of yarn. So the stomach acids have to unravel it and chop it up into something called amino acids. There's 20 amino, amino acids that make up all the proteins that we eat. And some of them we can make out of other things in our body. Uh, other of them are called essential. Essential means we have to get it from an outside source. So it takes this ball of yarn, unravels it, chops it up into some collection of this 20 amino acids, goes into your small intestine, it gets absorbed, goes to your liver, and then does its thing. But 
if you put in too much protein, and that's the problem with one of the problems with animal protein is it's way too much protein. Your body only needs about eight to ten percent of its total caloric intake as protein. A steak is about seventeen percent, and even more than that, anything and more than the seventeen percent is wasted. And so, if you put too much protein in your body, your body has to get rid of it, and it puts a major strain on your kidneys, on your liver, on your digestive system. Uh, the number one salt source of salt for young chil young kids, young young adults, I should say. What do you think the number one so source of salt is? Chips, processed food, chicken. Chicken is the number one source of salt for young people. And so there's a lot of reasons why eating an animal product is not a good idea. And salt can raise your blood pressure, and that's not good for romance. So a lot of things wrong with eating the animal protein just from the fact that it's way too much protein. And it can put stress on your kidneys, on your liver, and ev eventually cause damage to the kidneys and the liver. There were studies done, many studies done, on how protein affects kidney and kidney disease. And if you have chronic kidney disease, animal protein can just tear up the kidney. The same amount of plant protein, same amount, like grams, whatever grams were, same amount of plant protein, no effect on the kidneys, no adverse effect on the kidneys. So it's not just the amount of protein, it's the source of the protein and animals being the worst one. Also, it takes a lot of energy, like I said, to digest food. So if you eat a big heavy meal, chances are you're gonna be tired. And you're not gonna be as frisky, perhaps, as you'd like to be. And so it's gonna be exhausting to the body. And when meat gets in your gut, it doesn't digest very well, and it can rot. And when it rot, it causes gases to form. And so one of the things that we talk about, especially for older people when it comes to romance, is body image. And for young people, too. And if you're all bloated and full of gas, that's really not going to be something that makes you feel too sexy. And so the meat is going to rot and give off these gases. Many of the gases, by the way, from meat are carcinogenic. And over time, they can lead to ultimate to things like cancer. Plus, the meats are oftentimes loaded with steroids, chemicals, hormones, antibiotics, pesticides, herbicides. They're fed genetically modified food. And the food many times is sprayed with something called glyphosate. Now, glyphosate acts as an antibiotic. It does a lot of damage to the body, but one of the things that it does that's bad is it acts as an antibiotic, and it kills off the good bacteria as well as the bad bacteria in your colon. And you need bacteria for every function of the body, including your immune system. So when it comes to romance, we want to make sure our immune systems are as strong as they can be because we don't want to be spreading cooties back and forth. So the steroids, of course, many of them are estrogen-like compounds because when we sell a cow or a chicken, we sell it by the pound. And estrogen causes you to put on weight. Testosterone doesn't. So we don't want testosterone-laden cows. We want estrogen-laden cows. And so the more estrogen you get in your body, it essentially counteracts testosterone. And testosterone is your romance hormone. It's your sex drive hormone. It does a lot of other things too, but it's, today we're just talking about sex drive. So not a good idea for that reason. Also, the animal products are clumped with, uh, uh, loaded with saturated fats. Now, if you eat a saturated fat, and that's animal fats, uh, coconut oil, palm oil can be a different, mildly saturated fat, but still saturated fat. It, when saturated fats come in, in contact with the blood, it essentially clumps the red blood cells together. And red blood cells clump together, they can't carry oxygen. You need oxygen to make your brain work, make your body work. You need good blood flow. And so saturated fats can uh, cr increase the viscosity of the blood, make the blood thicker, and so it doesn't flow as smoothly. And when it comes to romance, it's all about blood flow for men and women. So if your blood is thick and the red blood cells are clumped together and you have some clogging of the arteries already, it's not going to work very well. So you have to consider that as well. So if we're cooking the meats, if you grill the meats, because a good steak should be grilled, right? You get those lines on the steak, those grill marks that taste so good. Those are called heterocyclic amines. And heterocyclic amines are known carcinogens. And the smell of the steak cooking, when the fat drips down on the coals and it creates that wonderful smell, those are called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are also carcinogenic. So we don't want to go down that road either, because that can cause real bad problems. And when you heat the fats, they, they change the molecular structure, and so they become hydrogenated. 
hydrogenated means uh, the molecules of hydrogen are attached onto these fats. And again, viscosity, preventing blood flow, not really something you want to get in your body. Now, meat, when it gets in your gut, we said can rot. And when it rots, the gases can be absorbed into your blood. And the gases are then exchanged in your lungs, and they come out your mouth. And that can cause bad breath. Now, there's two types of bad breath that I've come across in my life. One of them is you just didn't brush your teeth. You know that kind of smell. But if your breath smells like sewer, if it smells like a potty, that means the food is rotting in the colon and giving off these rotten bowel gases. And then the gases are exchanged back and forth in the, uh, in the lungs, and then the breath, it comes out your mouth. So if you smell somebody's breath and it smells like a bathroom, Chances are they've got a digestive problem. It's rotting in the colon. And inevitably, what I found in my career of 38 years is the stomach can push up against the diaphragm. If the stomach pushes up against the diaphragm, you're not digesting your food properly, and we need to adjust or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. It's a very gentle, painless technique. And amazing things happen to people's digestive system when you fix their gut. And I have this condition. My stomach slides up against my diaphragm periodically. And I remember being out and someone told me, and they, they, un they know what I do and everything, and they said, you need your stomach adjusted. And I knew exactly what they meant. They meant my breath stunk and how to get my stomach adjusted again. So one thing that could really put, put, put the kibosh on romance is somebody having really bad breath. And so oftentimes if it's potty, we need to fix the stomach. And it's not mints and it's not brushing your teeth and it's not mouthwash. It's a gut issue. It's coming deep from in the gut. And until you fix that, that potty breath never goes away. And in the process of fixing it, you start to digest your food better. And you absorb your nutrients better, which helps everything in your body, including romance. So if we have that rotten, bad breath, that's what we need to do. And also meat uh, is an acid. And when you put acids in your body, your body has to neutralize those acids. And your body uses calcium as one of its prime neutralizing agents. So if you're eating things, what I call the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, if you're eating those things, the body has to neutralize the acid, and the body uses calcium as its primary neutralizing agent, so it's using up your calcium stores. And as the calcium stores get used up, you need calcium to do a lot of things, including relax the muscles. And romance is what we call a parasympathetic function. Now, there's two types of nerves in the body. Sympathetic nerves speed you up. Parasympathetic nerves slow you down. Romance is a parasympathetic function. You need to be in a relaxed state for men and women for it to function the best it possibly can. If you don't have enough calcium, you may not get to that relaxed parasympathetic state, and so that can adversely affect the romance, and you don't have enough calcium because you're eating meat, which is an acid that robs the body of calcium. Wow. Wow. How's that going down a rabbit hole? And so keeping the calcium stores in your body is really important, and we don't want to lose that. And we can lose that by eating acid foods. So, so far, we've covered just the steak in your romantic dinner, and it's probably one of the worst things you could eat when it comes to romance. Now, if you throw a lobster in there, lobsters are loaded with heavy metals, toxins, mercury, lead, but they're also loaded with cholesterol. And the cholesterol it can clog up your arteries. Now, once again, I said earlier, when it comes to romance, you need good blood flow. And if you've got clogged arteries, that really is one of the major causes, if not the major cause, of men having performance issues when it comes to romance is clogged arteries. And so we want to open up that blood supply and get the blood flowing. And if you're eating things that are very high in cholesterol, chances are you can increase your risk of plaquing of the arteries and preventing blood flow. And that works for women too, but women it's a lot less obvious. For men it's very obvious if you don't have the proper blood flow. So you want to get the blood flowing the best you can, and cholesterol in lobster and the heavy metal in lobster is not something you want to consider. So a steak and lobster dinner with butter on it is absolutely, positively one of the worst things you can put in your body on any occasion but especially if romance is in the air. And so you've got to start thinking about that. Now, don't worry. I'm going to tell you what to eat. I, I've got that covered for you too. Now, we talked earlier, and I, I want to circle back to this because it's really important, is diet is important, but the nerve supply is vital. 
you have to get the messages from the brain down the spine, out the nerves, to the organs, in this place, the reproductive organs, in order for the body to work. So if you have a pinched nerve in your low back, you might have back pain, leg pain, hip pain, but it also affects the colon, sex organs, and bladder. The number one treatment for that is chiropractic care. If you have a pinched nerve, the most effective, least expensive treatment for p back pain, pinched nerves, is chiropractic care. So why wouldn't you do that? So think about this. If you have pain, it's a warning sign. It's telling you that something's wrong. And if you ignore it, chances are it's only going to get worse. So if right now, if you have pain, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, sciatic pain, whatever it is, arm pain, numbness, tingling, headaches, I strongly advise that you come see us. I prescribe you come see us. The best prescription I can give you when it comes to back pain is come see us and let's do an evaluation. And let's see if it is something that we think we can help. In major majority of cases, it is. If it's not, I can always refer you out. I can send you to another doctor, pain management, orthopedist, neurologist, neurosurgeon, uh, physical therapist, maybe it's psychologist, psychiatrist. But in most cases, we can get to the cause of the problem. So if you're serious about wanting to get well, you have to consider the nervous system as the number one thing when it comes to your overall health care plan. So if you want to make an appointment to come see us, and I think you should, go to our website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. We in the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb, and we can get you an appointment usually within 24 hours if we need to, but we can always put it out later if we have to. And we would love the opportunity to be your doctor. There's no reason not to. Why wouldn't you want to get healthy and get the nervous system checked, get diet straightened out, check your digestive system, do everything you can to be as healthy as possible? Why wouldn't you do that? Now, normally the first visit is $912. For our listeners, I've dropped that down to $299. That includes a consultation, examination, x-rays, first treatment, going over the x-rays, and a complete nutrition evaluation. The x-rays alone are going to cost you way more than $299 anywhere else. So if you're serious about wanting to get well, drjoe.com, book your appointment now. Okay, take action now. If you don't, there's a very good chance your problem is just going to get worse. So whether it's romance or whatever, come see us and let's see if we can get that thing taken care of. So if you're just tuning in, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We're talking today about how food affects your romantic life. And I want to talk now about alcohol. Because alcohol, you might think wine is a romantic dinner, but maybe a glass of bourbon or whatever it is that you like. Alcohol reduces your body's ability to produce testosterone. So you're thinking to yourself, I'm feeling relaxed. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm going to have me a couple of drinks, and it's going to get funky in here. Well, not a good idea. Because the alcohol reduces your ability to experience stimulation, because it numbs you. But it also reduces your body's ability to produce testosterone. Now, testosterone does a lot of things. It helps build muscle, your heart, your lungs, your liver, your digestive system, your colon, your blood vessels, plus your biceps and your triceps and your sex organs. So it's dropping your testosterone levels. And as estrogen goes up, estrogen can cause you to lay down fat. Fat produces estrogen. Because if you have testosterone, testosterone essentially goes in one side of the cell, a fat cell, and comes out as estrogen. And so the more fat you have, the more you're, produ you're converting testosterone into estrogen. And so then we say, well, you're low in testosterone. Let's give you some testosterone injections. Great idea. However, there's a downside to it. If you take testosterone injections, your body can say, you know what? I got plenty of testosterone. I don't have to make my own anymore and reduces its own production, and ultimately can cause your testicles to shrink. So gentlemen, I don't think there's anything in the world you would want more, less, <laughs> less than having your testicles shrink, and that's what happens if you take outside hormones. Now, short term, they make you feel great. Long term, not a good idea. So my goal is to try to get your body to produce its own testosterone and balance out your hormones as opposed to taking it from an outside source. Alcohol does exactly that. It lowers your body's ability to produce testosterone. It's also diuretic, right? You ever notice it makes you pee? Drink one beer, you pee out three. Where those other two beers come from? Your body is giving up its own vital fluids to flush the alcohol out of the system, and in the process, you dehydrate. As you dehydrate, you don't have as much blood volume. And we said earlier, what do you need? Blood volume. So alcohol on many, many levels is not a good idea when it comes to romance, short-term and long-term.
So consider that next time you think a glass of wine is going to be romantic. It's really anti-romantic. So we're going to continue on with our romantic Valentine's Day dinner. And so far, we've had steak and lobster, and we've had a glass of wine. Now let's say we have something like a potato. Baked potato, sour cream, butter. Okay, I'll go with that. Potato, not so bad. Tends to be good stuff too. If you're going to make potatoes at home, I'm going to tell you a little secret here. If you're going to make any starches, potatoes, pastas, rice, what I want you to do is cook it and cool it. Put it in the refrigerator overnight and then eat it the next day. You can heat it up again or you can eat it cold. And when you do that, about 40% of the carbohydrates that are in the whatever it is, the rice, the pasta, the potato, become what we call resistant starches. Resistant starches mean you're not going to absorb as much of the sugar that you normally would by about 40%. And those resistant starches now become something called prebiotics. Prebiotics feed the good bacteria in your colon, helping build up your digestive system and your immune system and every other aspect of your life. So resistant starches, wonderful. So if you're going to eat a potato, that's the best way to do it. But we're at a restaurant, you and I, or whoever it is you're out with, and so that may not be the best thing for you. Uh, You're not going to cook it and then cool it, of course. That's not going to happen. But the potato can actually help produce serotonin, and serotonin makes you happy. And serotonin becomes melatonin, which helps you sleep. Now, if you're putting butter and sour cream on it, it's essentially the same thing that we talked about with meat. Saturated fat, high in estrogen, clogs up your blood vessels, not a good idea. They also, the the butters and the sour creams, can have uh, hormones in them. And the hormones, again, not good for you. And they clump your red blood cells together. So kind of the same thing as we just talked about with meat. So I don't want to beat a dead horse here. All right. So, so far, our romantic dinner has included steak, lobster, baked potato. So far, the baked potato is the only winner. Now, if you're going to eat a baked potato and you want to put an oil on it, which you shouldn't use processed oils anyway, so you should really cut back on your processed oils as much as you can. But you can use something like olive oil as opposed to butter or sour cream. And you could add a little pepper to it, maybe a little air-dried sea salt. That might work. You could add salsa to it, mushrooms, chop up, you know, sauteed mushrooms and onions. Um, So there's many ways you can do the potato or just salt and pepper. Um, as opposed to adding the butter and the sour cream, which I understand makes it taste good. I get that, but it's not good for you. And today we're talking about what's the best thing for romance. Now, maybe you're going to have a cup of coffee. I can go on and on about foods, but so we're going to have a cup of coffee. Coffee increases something called homocysteine in your body. Homocysteine causes cholesterol to stick to the artery walls. Stuck to the artery walls, less blood flow, and what do we talk about? It's got to be all about the blood flow, baby. It's all about the blood flow. So not a good idea. It's also a very strong acid, and if you do acids, it can rob the body of calcium. We talked about that. It's a diuretic. It makes you pee. makes you sweat, which can make you stink, which certainly could be uh, anti-aphrodisiac. It's a diuretic. It makes you pee. You lose blood volume. If you put sugar in it, sugar weakens your immune system, and we don't want that, and sugar makes you tired. If you use artificial sweetener, it's the worst of all. Of all the things I teach you, The one thing that I would suggest you avoid at all costs would be artificial sweetener. Now, artificial sweetener is in about, I think it's 6,000 products last time I researched, and that was years ago. So it's in 6,000 products. And some of the side effects of aspartame specifically, that's the most common one, is headaches. It can tighten your blood vessels, preventing blood flow. Because remember, it's all about the blood flow and the nerve flow. And uh, so it can cause over 89 different problems. So aspartame, not a good idea. So, folks, I've got to go to a break real soon. We've got so much more to cover. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We're talking about the food sex or the food romance connection and how food affects your love life. Now, if you have any questions, you can send them to me through my website, drjoe.com. Any health question. doesn't have to be about romance. Drjoe.com. Happy to answer your questions for you. Please follow us on social media. It's at Dr. Joe Esposito. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. We post every single day. And you're going to get so many health tips absolutely free at Dr. Joe Esposito. If you're a podcast junkie, go to your podcast service, type in Dr. Joe, D-R-J-O-E, for the health of it. Dr. Joe, for the health of it. Hundreds of hours of podcasts. We post at least two podcasts a week. And the website, drjoe.com, you can search it. Just type in the search bar what you're looking for. We've probably got a lot of good information up there for you. Coming up, we're going to talk about supplements and other things that you can do to improve your love life. A lot of good information coming up. This is the bad, this is the negative part of the show. Coming up is the good part. Again, the website, drjoe.com. We'll be right back. Part one, done. 
I got so much to cover. God, this is this could be a four hour podcast easily. So, all right, what do you got? So someone was wondering if if they did want to still have some alcohol, what would you recommend? Wow, Sophie's choice here. Um, I I don't know. Um, probably a clear alcohol, like a vodka or something like that. Probably going to be slightly less toxic, but really it's the alcohol, it's the OH, you know, the molecule that really causes the damage to the liver and the blood vessels and the brain and destroys brain cells and affects love life and testosterone. So I, I wish I had a better answer for you, but I don't. So the pure, the less ingredients, the better. How about that? Yeah. You can always get a mocktail. Mocktail. That's Those what I do when I go great. out. I yeah. get invited. I got invited to another party this coming weekend, and I can't go because I got to work. Um, but again, if they have a bartender, bartenders love making the mocktails. They usually do. They make it a lot of fun. So that's what I do. It's good. All right. What else? That was really all. All right. Easy one today. All right. Ready for part two? Hey, folks. Dr. Joe Esposito here. Thanks for tuning in. If you stayed with us, thank you. If you're just joining us, welcome. Glad you could be here. What we're talking about today is a very adult topic. We're talking about the food romance connection. Now, if you have children in a room, I'm going to give you another disclaimer, and you don't want them to hear this. We're not going to curse. We're not going to talk about anything trashy. We're talking science here. But I want to let you know this is an adult topic, and you can decide. Or you can decide if you don't want to hear it. I get that. I'm okay with that. So if you need to, now's your chance to uh, you know, switch channels. But I know you won't because this is really a good topic and a lot of good information. So we covered if uh, well you, you're going to go out to a romantic dinner. So we covered what happens if you eat steak or meat. We talked about lobster. We talked about wine. We talked about uh, potato, bread and butter, um, uh, potato, sour cream. I'm going to talk about bread in a second. Uh, we were talking about coffee and uh, really one of the worst things because it's an acid. And acid robs your body of calcium. Also, coffee is a highly sprayed food. So what it means is it's sprayed with a lot of chemicals, including oftentimes, not always, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, because the coffee sits around and grows fungus. If you're going to do coffee, I recommend organic decaf coffee, if you have to. And people always say, well, Dr. Joe, if I, if what is the best meat? What is the best alcohol? What is the best coffee? It's a real tough call. If you're going to eat meat, it should be organic at least. If you're going to do coffee, I'd recommend decaf, organic decaf. Um, but I would prefer you don't. And the reason is, life's short. And in my life, I've had a lot of people pass on. Friends, sometimes accidents, sometimes cancer. Uh, I'm, the only really, I'm the only member left of my immediate family. And so I've watched a lot of people die in my life. And every one of them, unless it was a car accident, instant, all regretted doing certain things that led to their demise. So I don't know anybody on their deathbed is going to say, man, I wish I had more scotch. I wish I had another steak because that's what led them there in many cases. So you can make decisions on your own. You're big boys and girls. Whatever you decide to do is up to you, but I can tell you it's a whole lot more fun being healthy than it is being sick. I've been both, and I'd much rather be healthy than sick. So we're talking today about the food romance connection and how different foods are affecting your love life. So now we're on to dessert already. I'll, may, I'll talk about a salad, too. I didn't talk about that. If you have a salad, good for you. I wouldn't do a creamy dressing like a ranch or a, a, a Caesar. Now, go with oil and vinegar if you can. Vinegar, actually all vinegars, but apple cider vinegar is the best, actually slows down your absorption of carbohydrates and can help with blood sugar issues. So by having vinegar on your food, that can actually help stabilize blood sugar, and that benefits, many, many benefits. And it can also help you lose weight. Now, it's not going to be the only thing that helps you lose weight, but adding vinegar, you know, half a, teasp a tab teaspoon or t uh, two of apple cider vinegar to your salad, to your soup, whatever you're eating, just swallow it, can actually help lose weight as part of a weight loss protocol. So yeah, if you're going to do salad, just do oil and vinegar. I'm, I'm okay with that. All right, so we're coming into dessert, All right, because I want to cover dinner, and I want to tell you what to eat, and that's a whole other talk there. So let's assume you're going to have something fun like cheesecake. I was just talking about cheesecake with a very dear friend of mine. And how my mother, who was very overweight, um, you, we used to go to my Aunt Mary's house, and she always stopped at this one bakery, and they had a cherry cheesecake. My mother said, well, you got to bring a piece of cake if you're going to visit. Now, uh, looking back now, my mother wasn't buying it for my Aunt Mary, who was very thin, um, or my cousins, who were very thin. She was buying it for herself. 
it was an excuse. Well, if I buy cherry cheesecake, I can have a slice too then. I'm not, she was trying to make an excuse in her mind. I don't want to bring it home, but I can have it. And then my aunt would always have her take it home with her because my aunt didn't eat that stuff because she was very thin. And ironically, my aunt is the only one of all the Espositos that's still alive. And all that, that generation of Espositos. And I have a, come from a big family. Uh, 1969, we had, my grandparents had a 50th wedding anniversary, and everybody showed up. 73 direct descendants of my grandparents. So a lot of that first generation is gone now, and now it's my cousins and children from there on out. So I don't know how many Espositos there are now from just from grandma and grandpa. They were a very prolific Italian, good, good Catholic uh, family there. Uh, but it was an excuse. I go back because my aunt's still alive, and she was a thin one. Um, most of my other relatives were overweight. And so that's something we can control. And if you don't know how to control it, go to my website, drjoe.com, and type the words weight loss in the search bar and listen to the show we did on weight loss. I just finished a class, and we're going to be doing a lot of these, I think. It, it, it was very extremely successful. Um, and I coached people four weeks to do a 21-day detox protocol. And it was supplements, and it was um, – uh, certain foods you ate, but you, you avoided certain foods. And then we had once a week a coaching class uh, online on Zoom. Everyone that took the class, 100%, said the same thing after the third week. For the first time in my life, I have control over what I'm eating. Because I used to be fat. When I was a kid, I was fat. I can say the F word. And they, have, they suddenly got control over what they're eating, and they can say, no, I don't want that processed food. I don't want that cookie. I don't want that bread. I don't want that cheesecake. Because it's the brain is the thing that creates the craving. And with the program, you're able to reset your brain. Extremely successful. And the money that it costs to take the class, everyone said the same thing. They saved way more than they spent. Because they were taking supplements. They were eating better foods. They weren't spending money on junk food. They weren't going out to dinner and spending money there. 100% of the people I took the class said the same thing. I made money doing this. But you got to give me a 21-day commitment if you're going to do it. That's the only thing. So Anyway, I digress. There are ways to get out. Uh, bread and butter, uh, loaded with gluten. Gluten can cause inflammatory reactions in the bowels, not very romantic. And also, it be, eating bread is kind of like eating just a tablespoon of sugar, and that goes right into fat. And uh, if you smoke, just don't smoke. I don't think I need to go into smoking. Very few people do that anymore. So other reasons why you might have issues in a romantic department. Of course, we said pinch nerves. Uh, that's by far the most common set food and then pinch nerves. And my team is really good at fixing pinch nerves in most cases, so you might want to come see us for that. Fatigue, uh, we did many shows on energy over the years. You go to my website, drjoe.com. I think if you just type in energy, you'll, you'll get some good shows on that. Stress, if you're stressed out, you produce a hormone called cortisol. Cortisol causes you to lay down fat, and fat then produces estrogen, and we've talked about that. But cortisol keeps you stuck in what's called the sympathetic lifestyle. There's two types of nerves we talked about. Parasympathetic slow you down, sympathetic speed you up. If you're stressed out, high cortisol levels, cortisol keeps you in a sympathetic mode. You need to be in a parasympathetic mode for proper romance. And so it's not just a chemical thing, okay? It's not what's love got to do with it. It's just a chemical reaction. Well, it's more than just chemical reaction. It's also a neurological reaction. If you're stuck in that sympathetic mode because you're stressed, it's really difficult to get to the ultimate phase or whatever you want to call it uh, in your body to enjoy romance. So cortisol can spike. Well, what happens is if you have high cortisol and you're always stressed out, eventually the cortisol levels drop dramatically. They crash. And when they crash, you're tired all the time because cortisol gives you energy too. And so we do a test in our office called the Dutch test, and we can measure – it's a urine test – and we can measure your cortisol and your hormone levels, your testosterone, your estrogen. Are you breaking down testosterone and estrogen? Is it a liver issue? Is it an adrenal gland issue? And try to get to the cause of your hormone imbalances for men and women. And if, you're, if you crash and your cortisol level is pooped out, it's really bottomed out, we need to build up your cortisol levels. And we have little techniques for that too. So, uh, Drugs, of course, drugs can have a major impact on your romance. Uh, infections can affect your body's function. And body odors. And uh, most people that if they smoke or if they drink or if they eat a lot of meat have body odors. And many times, uh, not just their armpits, leave it there. And that's not very pleasant when it comes to romance. And so we want to make sure our body is clean from the inside so that it functions, but also smells better. Nobody wants stink when it comes to romance. So 
one of my popular lectures on my website, drjoe.com, is called So What Can I Eat? And there we talk about, generally speaking, what you can eat to stay healthy. Now we're going to talk about what can you eat when it comes to romance. What foods can you add to your diet that can actually help when it comes to uh, bedroom activity? So certain foods, vegetables specifically, asparagus, cucumbers, they're high in calcium, they're high in vitamin E, phosphorus, and you need all these things to help build up your hormone levels. So uh, across the board, I can just say fruits and vegetables. And that would be easy to do. Hot peppers. Hot peppers are vasodilators. What that means is they open up your blood vessels. They increase circulation to your whole body. Now, if you don't like hot peppers, that's okay. I'm giving you many, many options. You don't have to do all of them, but just throwing it out there. So hot peppers, you know, your, your spicy love life, going to spice up your love life. Uh, there's, is, there's meaning behind that. Spicy foods can actually be very good when it comes to romance. Avocados, artichokes. Uh, they're creamy, the artichoke hearts especially. So they're creamy, so they have a sexy texture, but they're also high in essential fatty acids. And essential fatty acids are necessary to build your hormones. Vitamin D is necessary. Vitamin D is a hormone, actually. Um, but it can help with other hormone production. So make sure you're getting vitamin D. I take Dr. Joe's vitamin D supplement every day. I take five drops a day. Uh, I take it until late spring. Now, in late spring, I get outside more often. I go for walks at lunch. I like to work in my garden. I like to be outside. And so I'm probably going to get enough sunlight. I don't need to take vitamin D. Only in the heart of summer, though. From late spring to early fall, that's when I take my vitamin D. And I take five drops of Dr. Joe's vitamin D every day. Celery, spinach, and figs are very alkalizing to the system. And we talked about acid. If you put acid in your body, your body needs calcium to neutralize the acid, along with other things. And calcium is necessary to relax the muscles and put you into parasympathetic mode. And parasympathetic nervous function is romantic function to be in, no romantic state to be in. So alkaline foods are very good. Some of the best alkaline foods, we talked about celery, spinach, and figs, would be Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Now, if you're not taking Super Greens and Essential Source, I don't know why. They are amazing. In my opinion, they're the best supplements in the world. Now, that's my opinion. Uh, Essential Source is raw fruits and vegetables loaded with enzymes, and enzymes are necessary to break up inflammation and keep the body functioning. Prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, complete multivitamin, uh, essential source is the granddaddy of all supplements. Then we pair it with super greens. And super greens is extremely alkalizing to the system. Wheatgrass, barleygrass, alfalfa grass, chlorella, spirulina has essential fatty acids in it. Omega-3 fatty acids are found in the chlorella and spirulina. Chlorella is excellent for cleaning out your liver. And the liver is where hormones are broken down and passed out. So if you've got this backlog of old, wasted, you know, ha not working hormones anymore, simply put, it can help break it down and flush it out. So I take Super Greens and Essential Source every day. I think you should too. And if you're not going to do anything else that I say, please at least take Super Greens and Essential Source. And then you hopefully start to feel a little better. You have a little more energy. Your brain starts working better. And then you can say, you know what? I'm going to try something else. Maybe Dr. Joe was right about taking a walk 10 minutes a day. He was right about teaching me to cross crawl to reset my brain. He was right about getting chiropractic care to open up the nerve supply to the organs. He was right about getting the stomach fixed so I can digest my food and produce neurotransmitters so my brain works. So it's a gateway supplement. Oh, I like that. I just invented that word. A gateway supplement. It's going to get you into other things that are good for you. And so if you're not doing super greens and essential source, you should. Okay, and they're on the website, drjoe.com. Other things you can add to your diet. Ginger and ginkgo biloba are vasodilators and in some w uh, circles consider an aphrodisiac. Now, ginger is amazing. I, what I do is I take organic ginger, I peel it, I put it in a food processor, cover it about one-third with organic lemon juice, and I puree the heck out of it until it's essentially just a, like, like tomato puree. Then I put it in an ice cube tray and freeze it. So I have these ice cubes of ginger and lemon. And you can have ginger tea, gosh, every day if you wanted to. You could drink it cold, you could drink it hot. Sweeten it, with <coughs> sweeten it with something like stevia, um, uh, lohan, xylitol. Don't use sugar or artificial sweetener. That's the worst. So ginger is a great aphrodisiac, uh, but it also helps increase circulation. It's very warming in the winter, too, by the way. So ginger tea is just amazing. 
Now, there's things like ginseng, Siberian, uh, uh, Asian or Korean. Uh, Siberian isn't quite as potent. It increases sperm production and testosterone. So you can consider ginseng to help with sperm, pr sperm production and testosterone, and it's a supplement. Oysters, you may have heard oysters are the sexy food and you eat oysters, it's supposed to make you more virile, more potent. Well, oysters are very high uh, in zinc, and zinc is found in uh, the prostate, and so there's the connection there. But the problem with oysters are they are probably, in my opinion, the worst thing you could eat. They are so acidic. Many times they're still alive when you're eating them, so there's a gross factor there too. But they're very acidic, which robs the body of calcium, and they're also loaded with heavy metals like mercury, lead. Because if you have a, <coughs> a tank of water, and you put that tank of water, you put oysters in the tank of water, the oysters will, and it's dirty, filthy, disgusting water, the oysters will filter out that water and make it clean again. But where do all the pollutants go? Where do all the toxins go? Right into the oysters. So they are truly one of the most horrible, disgusting, toxic foods you could possibly eat. So you can get zinc from eating Brazil nuts. You don't have to eat a slimy, disgusting, heavy metal-laden mollusk. So don't, don't, just because it's high in zinc doesn't mean it's good for you. There's a lot of negatives to it. You want to make sure you drink enough water because water helps blood flow. Water helps thin out the blood. And, of course, it's all about blood flow and nerve supply here. And raw fruits and vegetables are so important. I want you to have something raw at every meal. Now, when I say raw, broccoli, cucumbers, tomatoes, avocados, salad, apples, oranges, peaches, pears, bananas, pineapples, kiwis, mangoes, raw food is going to be so important. And, in fact, the ultimate uh, in a romantic dinner would be a raw food dinner. Now, you can also take uh, uh, things that are high in uh, – that will produce nitric oxide. And arugula – and beets are very high in the precursors to nitrates that create nitric oxide. So I would suggest if you're going to have a romantic dinner, you do an oil and vinegar salad dressing with arugula and beets. Now, you may not like arugula and beets. I get that, but I'm just throwing it out there. And that's going to help increase your nitric oxide. Now, there's a supplement on our website, drjoe.com, and it's called Dr. Joe's Nitric Oxide Support. And this is the building blocks, the citrulline, that converts into nitric oxide. Of all the supplements that it comes to romance, that's the one I want you to have on hand. Because nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels and increases circulation to your whole body. Now, men, you may have tried the little blue pills because it's supposed to help with function. And about half the time or more, they don't work. And the reason they don't work is because you have to have nitric oxide present for the little blue pill to work. If you have nitric oxide present, many times you don't need a little blue pill. So if you're so depleted in nitric oxide, you can't have any function, those little blue pills aren't going to do anything for you. And so, or they may help a little bit, but they can cause severe headaches, and they're very dangerous. They have a lot of side effects. So I would prefer to get everything working naturally without those blue pills. So nitric oxide is a key. So super greens, essential source, nitric oxide, and vitamin D is what we've talked about so far. All those are on the website, drjoe.com. I'm also going to recommend glutathione because glutathione helps the liver work, and liver breaks down hormones, and then the body can pass out the waste products and function more efficiently. So there's actually a protocol of supplements that I recommend, which is pretty cool. And that's where uh, super green essential source, nitric oxide, glutathione, um, vitamin D, those are really important for function. And if you're staying away from the bad foods, like the alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, you're not putting such a stress on your digestive system, which is the number two consumer of energy. You have to check the nerve supply to your organs. I cannot stress that enough. I don't care how many little blue pills you take. I don't care how much nitric oxide you take, how much super greens and essential source you take. If you have a pinched nerve going to, in this case, the sex organs, they cannot perform at 100%. They might perform, but not at 100%. So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, sciatica, headaches, uh, muscle weakness, folks, come see us. In many cases, it's a simple series of chiropractic adjustments that you need to put the bones back in place, open up the nerve supply. We also do a nutrition consult on every one of our patients. It's included in your treatment plan. And that nutrition protocol is designed to help you function the best you possibly can from a chemical standpoint. Then the chiropractic care fixes the physical aspects, 
We fix the digestive system so you can break your food down and absorb the nutrients to produce the neurotransmitters, which helps the mental aspects. And now you have a shot at getting better, regardless of what it is, not just romance, but for anything. So if you want to make an appointment, and I think you should, go to our website, drjoe.com. You can book an appointment right now. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb, and we would love to be your doctor. We would love the opportunity to check the nervous system, check the digestive system, look at your diet, talk about a supplement protocol if necessary, and get the body working. And so I don't know why you're not doing it. We accept people with all insurances. It depends what your insurance covers. There's in-network, out-of-network, no coverage, high coverage, high deductibles, low deductibles. So we'll check all that for you. And even if you don't have insurance, about 50% of our patients are cash patients because chiropractic is the most effective, least expensive treatment. Why wouldn't you do it for back pain? Why wouldn't you do it? And if you're ever in a car accident, folks, please come see us immediately. Because if the car's damaged, you're damaged. I've never seen it any other way. And what happens many times is you damage the nerves in the low back. Two years, five years, ten years from now, suddenly there's a problem with the colon, sex organs, and or bladder. And your case is closed. Nobody wants to talk to you about it anymore. And now you're suffering. So don't, don't be foolish. If you have an issue, get it checked as quickly as humanly possible. And if you don't, it's shame on you. I don't know what else to tell you. We have the sources he- resources here to help you. Now, all the supplements we talk about, Super Green Central Source, Nitric Oxide, uh, Vitamin D, we have men's hormone support and women's hormone support. We have estrogen regulator, not for women who are menopausal or perimenopausal. But if you go to the website, you can read what each one does. I take estrogen regulator every day because I don't want my testosterone converting into estrogen. I take men's hormone support as well. Super green essential source, nitric oxide. I take omega-3 fatty acids for my brain uh, because we need omega-3. It's essential that we get omega-3s from an outside source. Uh, Of course, the nitric oxide is huge uh, to get circulation through the body, and it gives you a ton of energy. If nothing else, you'll feel great with it. So, and if you have any questions, send them to me through the website, drjoedrjoe.com, but make an appointment now. Stop suffering needlessly, not just for romance. I know this this is kind of a tongue-in-cheek show we do here today, uh, but it's a very serious issue. And in fact, one of the ha- signs of heart disease, which we're probably going to talk about next week, is uh, erectile dysfunction. It's a circulatory issue. And so, yeah, these are serious issues, not something to be joked about, not something to be scoffed and put aside. Something's wrong. And you've got to find out why. And that's what we always try to do with our patients, try to get to the cause of the problem, not just treat the symptoms. And so stay away from the bad stuff, eat the good stuff. If you don't know what to eat, go to our website, drjoe.com, and type in, so what can I eat in the search bar? And that's a general guideline. Today was specific for romance, but that's a general guideline. Make sure you follow us on social media, at Dr. Joe Esposito, because we post every single day. And we post a lot of fun facts and health facts you're not going to get anywhere else in the world. And if you follow us on social media, all that is our gift to you. It's no charge. That's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Please follow us. It's very important. If you're a podcast junkie, go to your podcast service and type in Dr. Joe for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it. And you can uh, we post at least twice a week on podcasts, sometimes more than that. So there's so much information available to you. The website, drjoe.com, at Dr. Joe Esposito on social media. Uh, the podcast, Dr. Joe for the health of it on your podcast service. And you can send me questions through the website, drjoe.com. I'm happy to answer the best I possibly can. So I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We're talking today about food romance connection. And other things you can do to help the body function is erogenous zones. Erogenous zones are parts of the body where nerves and blood vessels are very close to the skin. And so when they're stimulated, it's very uh, many times erotic. So places like the inside of your elbow, the back of your knees, the the neck, the front of your neck, the inside of your neck, the nape of your neck, uh, these are all great. Your feet, your hands, um, your ears. These are places where there's a lot of nerve and blood vessels. And so by gently stimulating them, many times that can be very relaxing and kick you into the parasympathetic mode. Not everybody likes certain places being stimulated. That's their personal preference. Don't try to force it. That's not something you want to do. That's why massage is so wonderful because you can massage and stimulate so many of the nerve. Aromatherapy, there's something called yang yang, Y-A-N-G, Y-A-N-G. And that's uh, an essential oil that has been touted to be an aphrodisiac. So you can try something along those lines. Uh, Music with a slow slow beat, like the beat of your heart, 
Uh, there's a band called Enigma. I don't know if you, they were a while ago, and their music was the same, a very cool, sensual beat to the heart. So that might be something you can do as well. All right, I've got a lot more to cover. I don't have any more time. If you have any more questions, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. I'm happy to help you with any way I can. Make an appointment to come see us. Marietta Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb, drjoe.com. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Thanks for tuning in. Okay. Any questions? Yes. So someone was wondering if you could explain the best times to take your products, like the capsules and not the powdered supplements. Okay, I take them first thing in the morning, and the reason is I want to make sure I get them in my body and start my day off. So I take them first thing in the morning. Some of them require more than one dose a day, and that's why, generally speaking, on the bottle, that's like a one-dose thing. When we do the uh, individual protocols for people, many times we'll add it two or, three, two, th two or three times a day. So generally speaking, I take mine in the morning. Now, the nitric oxide, sometimes I'll take it in the morning and I'll take it in the evening. I usually take it like I took it this morning, and I took it right before the show today because I like to get that nitric oxide, get that blood vessel working. So generally speaking, I take them in the morning, but if when you do a consultation with us, we'll be more specific for you. What else? So the last question I have is what what can I do for puffy eye puffy under eye bags? Puffy under eye bags is usually due to adrenal problems, the adrenal glands. Um, and so your body isn't producing prostaglandins and prostaglandins control inflammation. So whenever I see puffy eyes, I always think adrenals. So super green is an essential source, of course, minimum of Dr. Joe's adrenal support. Nitric oxide would be helpful probably as well. Um, and it's not going to go away overnight. It's going to take weeks and maybe months of building up the adrenal glands again to get that happening. And stop causing inflammation. And what are the inflammatory foods? Say them with me. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweeteners. So cut out the inflammatory foods. Go on an anti-inflammatory diet. You can throw turmeric in there as well. Turmeric is a wonderful anti-inflammatory and give it several months because it's been going on for years. It's going to take some time to reverse. Nothing else? That's Thanks, guys. Follow me on all, all platforms, at Dr. Joe Esposito. TikTok's a new one, so.